Captain Tar Crowline. On holiday in the region, Fräulein? Just passing through. Well, welcome to my little gift shop. Frau Heigel at your service. I must say you have a beautiful shop, Frau Heigel. Thank you, Fräulein. All our souvenirs are made for excellence, as we like to say here, all by local craftsmen. Were you looking for something in particular? Well, I'm actually looking for someone, not something. Someone who used to live in this house, and I was wondering if you could help. Well, there were quite a few owners before I bought the shop last autumn, so I can't really... So her name was Dana Rose. She lived here before the war. I was hoping to find some kind of trace of her here, so I could continue my search. I see. Well, I have heard of the roses, but I can't say if there's anything left of them inside the house. But don't you live here? No. My husband and I live in the suburbs. You see, the bridge was sacked just before the war, during the pogrom against the Vagrans. Oh, truly awful events. And then the neighborhood was bombed, just after the war, during the liberation. And many of the houses were damaged, including this one. They were hastily renovated after the war, but they remain mostly derelict. You mentioned a pogrom against this neighborhood's vagrant community. Can you tell me more? As much as anyone who knows anything about Wagen, I guess. It happened in 1938, if I recall correctly. A few months after Austria and Ostertal were annexed by the Brown Shadow. What happened? Well, the Brown Shadow organized riots against Vagarans on false pretexts. It led to pogroms throughout all the annexed countries, including this house. Were the Roses home when it all happened? Like I said, Fräulein, I don't know, but I hope not. Well, it doesn't look like the house was damaged, from what I can see. Your shop is charming, and so is the rest of the district. Thank you. That's because after the initial renovation, the council financed major rehabilitation work on the facades. But if the truth be told, they left the proprietors to foot the bill for our interiors. That's why my husband and I had to spend all our savings so that the shop interior shows the same high standard that we demand of our suppliers. That's a shame. Yes, and if the council persists in refusing to help fund the renovation works, there won't be any residents left on the bridge, let alone independent quality stores like mine. There'll be nothing left but bland franchise stores, like the one further along the bridge or on the musical square. So between the pogrom, the bombing, and the whole house being renovated, there's little chance of me finding any trace of the roses. It's not quite like that. To be honest, we didn't have the funds to renovate the rest of the house, so we used the upper floors for storing. Really? And now that you mention it, I do recall coming across old photographs from before the war, here and there in the house. The successive owners didn't want to throw them out, and I suppose they must have left them there. Would you mind if I went upstairs to take a look? Unless you would kindly bring the photos down yourself. Well, I can hardly leave the shop unattended while I go... I don't even know you, Fräulein. I see. In that case, would you mind if I had a look upstairs myself? Don't take it personally, Fräulein. But I don't know you enough to trust you. I'm very sorry. Now, if you'll excuse me, Fräulein, I have a customer.
This was written not long after her time at the refuge. A letter from Leon. So he did write back to Dana after the expedition left Kantar, the capital of Valtayar. The High Plateau of Balthayar, October 25th, 1937. My, My darling, darling Edelweiss. I hate myself for not sending you news more often, and for not being able to receive news of you. I find myself now where probably no other modern-day human has ever ventured before. I regret to inform you that I won't be able to go back to Europe with my fellow survivors. Something bad happened during the expedition. I, no doubt, am partly to blame. Nevertheless, I would like you to know my version of the events. After hard days of hiking, we set up our base camp on the threshold of a high valley where rhododendrons grew. All the witnesses seemed to concur. This was where the Goru the famous man of the mountains was most frequently sighted. For many long weeks, we explored without success every valley and mountain surrounding the camp. Autumn was approaching, the rivers started to freeze at the edges, and the prospect of having to head back with nothing for our toil was becoming more and more apparent. The joyful banter of the first weeks was no more. The men were becoming moody and tense. Especially our chief, Reinhard Berger. Up we get, Leon. Another day on a wild goose chase. I'd better get kitted up before going out. Okay. 